Well, praise the Lord. I want to talk to you today about uh, moving ahead in Christ, evangelizing for God. Um, and it all starts in the spirit realm. And I want you to go into, into John. And it all starts with you on the inside. Lots of what we have going on here today is a gospel in the churches where the people are, are almost like, you know, people get hypnotized. You know, they get the little pendulum swinging. You are getting tired now. And this is what's been going on for a, uh, a few generations into the church and I believe we need to get back to where the church was in the beginning on fire for Jesus. Uh, that we look at things right. That we, we uh, reach out with a hand of love because Jesus commanded us. But what's going on today that there's, there's what there is is a lot of songs. And we're, we're thanking God that our, our sins are washed away. That we're nothing but... Uh, our hearts are nothing but white as snow, and that's where, that's where it starts, and that's where it ends. And then what we do is we go home, and we keep ourselves in our sealed homes, and in our little lives with our families, but we never create a life where we're actually reaching out, reaching out with, um, with uh, uh, the gospel somewhere, and the gospel is what we need to reach out with, amen? You can reach out with kindness, and you can do this and that for the people out there, but you need to reach out with the gospel, the good news. And that's what the people did when Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. This is one of the commands of God. And Jesus says, this is how you'll know if you love me, if you keep my commands. Are you reaching out? But I want to say this, is that one of the first things to do, number one, to reach out, it has to start in the spirit realm. It has to start in the spirit realm. And Jesus talked to us about how can you, how can you spoil um, the man's house? Or how can you spoil his goods in his house unless you bind the strong man? Unless you bind the strong man. And so the number one thing that I, that what I want to talk about is, first of all, we need to have a plan and prepare for that plan. And one of the preparations of that plan to evangelize is the number one thing. We're going to have to fast and pray, and we're going to have to bind the strong man, which is who's the strong man? Satan's a strong man, right? He's a strong man. We would not have any problems down here if Satan was locked up. We'd not have any problems. Everything would flow. The love between one another would flow. God's love would flow. Everybody would be kind to one another. No one would, would be down. Everybody would be up, you know, like upbeat, like, hey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. And you really be good, you know. Everything would be upbeat. But we know that, that the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy, started at Adam and Eve, and it's went on down through the generations till our generation. And he's built up a force, and he has a plan. He wants to work in our lives. And God even showed that he, had, he foretold his plan, what he'd want to do with the nations. And so as we look at the nations and we see that God's word is true, then what God wants us to do is not fret over the nations, but look to God and say, you are true, O holy God, and I need to fall in line with what you want me to do. And first... I must move in the spirit. I must move in the spirit because we know it was the unseen, the invisible that made the visible, right? God spoke into the darkness and he said, let there be light. Amen. God spoke into the world and let there be planets. Let there be, let there be stars. He has them all named. He being invisible made the visible so we could see it. Same thing with us. We have to start in the spirit just like Jesus did. We have to be Christ-like, amen? So that's why Jesus prayed at night, and he, in one time he prayed all night long, all night long, and then he went down and walked on the water. He proved to those men that he was God, that he was the Christ, amen? So the same thing, you being Christ-like, you have to do the same thing. 
You have to pray in the spirit realm, get the spirit of God on you, bind that strong man, if, if it's in your life or, not, or other people's lives, and then you move in the spirit, and God makes way for you. He sends angels down in your life to make your way straight. So situations arise during the day that you can be productive and fruitful. Amen? Amen. This is one of the commands of God, that you be productive and fruitful. And the only way you're going to be able to do it is you've got to start in the spirit. Think about it. How does God get you born again? You start in the spirit. You declare Jesus Christ as Lord. You declare him as your Messiah. And you believe that in the supernatural that God raised him from the dead. And then the spirit of God comes in you. It all starts in the spirit. And then all once you start having this love for God and for people. And it all started with in the spirit, the Holy Spirit coming into your life. Well, I'm here today to say any strong man that's in a person's life or in other people's life, it has to be started. It has to start in the spirit realm. And it starts through fasting. It starts through praying. This is what, this is what we actually fight. It starts in the spirit realm and it ends in the spirit realm. This is actually what we fight in the, in the darkness. Like I said, if Satan was locked up in his dark realm that you can't see into, but if he's locked up, your life would run smooth. You wouldn't have eye infection. Christian wouldn't have had a piece fly up in his eye. Those things wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. You wouldn't run out and, and run the stop sign and, and, and collide with somebody or somebody wouldn't do that to you. Everything would run perfectly. So what do we do? We fast. We pray. We preach. We fast. We pray, we preach. We fast, we pray, and we speak the truth. We preach the gospel, amen? We fast, we pray. Fasting is essential in a Christian's life. You know, I talked about that. I think it was last week. I talked about that, and I talked how important it was to fast. It's a continuous prayer. You, you can't fulfill your call. You can't please God unless you fast. You can't please God unless you do some fasting. You say, well, what's fasting? It's just giving up a meal or giving all three of them up in a day's time. You can't please God unless you keep his commandments. What, it, what was his commandments? Go spread the gospel. Go spread the good news. Amen? Am I not right? How are you going to do that? Now, this is what some people do. They go to try to spread the good news and it don't work out. They haven't fasted and prayed yet. They haven't set the stage in the spirit. Okay? What God does, this is what God does. He takes your life and he says, okay, I'm God, all right? And you got problems in your life. I want you to fast and pray. So you fast and pray and all su surprising to you that over a period of time, things start working out in your life, in your life. And then he says, now I want you to fast and pray for your husband or your, or your wife or your children and this and that. And he works yourself out. He works you out into the public with your fasting and your praying. You got to get you out of jail. You got to get you out of jail before you can get other people out of jail. And it all starts in the spirit realm. And it all ends in the spirit realm. That when you fast and pray, miracles will happen. When you fast and pray, notice when Jesus told the devil, he had fasted 40 days, and when he told the devil, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, for it is written. He said those words under an anointing of the Holy Spirit because he had fasted, and he was connected with heaven, with the glory of heaven. And when he spoke those words, things happened. He was able to withstand the powers of darkness. He was able to overcome any weakness, he was able to stand fast and never sin. Why? Because he fasted and he prayed. We cannot get through this whole thing without buckling down and saying, now I'm going to do what I've been told to do in the word of God. I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray and I'm going to bind the powers of hell and I'm going to go preach the good news. He says, I've come to set the captives free. Jesus came to set the captives free. If we go into Luke 4.18, Christ-like, Luke 4.18. All right, let's go there. This will give us an idea what we need. 
were Christ-like, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, you would say, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That's you. To preach deliverance to the captives. We can be free and we can be victorious. And recover the sight to the blind who set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. To preach Christ is coming back. To it, preach be acceptable to God. In 1 John 2, 3 and 4, it says, Hereby we do know, this is how we know that we are, that we know him if we keep his commandments. This is how we know that we are intimate with God if we keep his commandments. God gave us some markers to know about where we should be. Thing is, the church, the church of God is lost. It don't know where it's at. It's talking about being free being washed in the blood of Jesus, and that's as far as it goes. That's as far as it goes. And it never goes any farther than that. Them and their own life. Them and their own life. And we leave it up to the missionaries or the preachers to go try to spread the good news when God has said, you go into all the world. You go into your territory. God has supplied to you. You go into your territory and Pray and fast that I would open up a door for you today or tomorrow. That I would work miracles in your life for other people. You know, nothing will give you more satisfaction. When we talk about the, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's your anointing that you've been called to that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that you've been called to that breaks the yoke. When you exercise your anointing that's on you, the yoke gets broken inside you. Satan can't stop you. You actually break the stronghold in your own life when you use the, the call that you're called to do. When you use that, it breaks the yoke that's over you. That's why when you get somebody born again, that's why when you, you preach the gospel, you walk away feeling so good about things because heaven's rejoicing inside of you. Because you've done just what you are called to do to go preach deliverance to the captives. Amen? You are fully anointed by God when you start walking in your anointing. See, one preaches, the other one fasts for him. You do some fasting, but you're not real good at it. But another one is able to fast four and five days, and they fast. You preach. Miracles happen. You're all in one accord working together. Amen? That's how it all works. And you all work together doing it. This is why when we were talking in Acts, they were all in one accord. They were all together doing what they needed to do. Barnabas had some land. He sold it and said, take care of the people that are there. Some of them don't have an ability to have any money. Give them this money. So the apostles gave a little bit here and a little bit there and say, all right, now go pay your rent for the month and this and that. And the whole thing flowed together. But miracles were happening. Miracles were happening. Why? Because this one did this. This one that didn't have any money. They were fasting. They were praying. Or they were preaching the gospel, the good news. But the one that had land and he couldn't preach. He couldn't preach. He couldn't teach. But he had some land. He was doing his part. And God was so excited about the whole thing. That he just couldn't show it any other way but shake the place. That he was happy and pleased what was going on there. Even though they were beating up Peter and John and they were having to, having to stand in the faith. God was pleased and he was happy. And that's what we want God to do in our lives. That's what we want God to be in our lives. We want to be fruit bearers and God doesn't give us a way out from doing it. Fruit bearers, it's a call that you're called to. Fruit bearers, it's a call that you're called to. You got to be a fruit bearer, whatever that is. If you read in John 15, it tells you about that. It tells you about that. And if you love Jesus, you'll bear fruit. I'm the vine, and my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me, it does bear fruit. It has the capability of bearing fruit. But he says, any branch in me that doesn't, I'll cut it off. 
We don't want to be cut off from Christ. How many want to be cut off from Christ? Is it enough? Is it enough to say, I'm washed with the blood of Jesus? That's a given. That's a no-brainer. All right, you were washing the blood of Jesus. Jesus says, now I want you to go do. I want you to do. So you say, what can I do? And you start off, I got to go into the spirit. And I got to start fasting and I got to start praying for whoever I know. And I got to say, God, you got to use me. And I'm fasting today that somehow you use me. Somehow you show me my call. Somehow you start opening up doors for me. Somehow I'm an asset to you in my territory. No, I'm not going to Africa because I don't feel like going to Africa. No, I'm not going to another country, but I got my country within a country. And I got my realm I'm supposed to touch. God, open up the doors. And they got to be opened up with prayer and fasting. God says, there's one fasting. Open up that door and he'll send an angel to open it up. Daniel fasted. Daniel fasted and God sent an angel. What happened? The whole place shook. God, God was happy with that. When angels come on the scene, your life will shake and it'll shake for the better. Amen? But there has to be an intensity going on. You got to also reach out from your family. If you want your family healed, you got to go on out and you got to do what you can do when you can do it. Amen. And don't let the devil discourage you. He'll have his place one day in hell in the lake of fire. He'll have his place. But you have your place right now. Amen. In the place of victory over him, over the powers of darkness. Because you've been called the anointing of the spirit is upon you. To, breathe, to preach to the poor. To deliver the captives. It's on you. It's on you. It's within you. Amen. Well, let's go here to um, John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. We're a church today that think that there's no commands that are going on. We just supposed to love Jesus. That's not true. That's not true at all. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Let me tell you what. When God gives you the comforter of the Holy Spirit, it's just all over you. You can't, you can't keep quiet. Your prayers make a difference. Your presence makes a difference, and God tests you a little at a time, a little at a time. He opens up a little door and a little, another door, and you're there, and you're making a difference. We got to get out of ourselves. We got to move out farther than our families. We got to move out. And we got we to gotta ask God to open doors. But first we got to bind that strong man inside of us. You know what we are sometimes? And I will admit to this. We are lazy. We're lazy in the spirit. We're lazy in the spirit. I look at my belly getting bigger and bigger. And I go, what am I going to do to get this thing off? Right? Everybody's looking down. It's true. We're all the same. We're all the same. And it's laziness. And this is what God says in Proverbs. He says, consider the ant. Look at the ant, what he does. How he never stops. How he, he's here and he's there and he gets everything ready. How do you figure he's around next spring? He made ready, went down in his hole. He got food and he got ready and he's always working. And he's always toiling and he's always doing all these things. He says, look at the ant, what they do. This is what Solomon said. We need to consider the ant when it comes to our spiritual condition. We really do. And we need to move in that. We need to be strong in that. We need to have that victory. And, and, and you'd be surprised, you know, if I fast, if I fast and you fast, people that are having a hard time in the body of Christ will say, wow, this thing left me. This thing worked out. Is it possible that we're seeing our brothers and sisters suffer in the spirit because we're just not doing the thing that needs to be done? That God has made way for us that somehow if we fast and we push a meal to, to a side that their life will straighten up. You know, whoever it is, that the marriage will be okay. That the people will fulfill their cause. Who's strong now? You know, what did Jesus say to the church? Strengthen the things that remain. Who remains? Who remains strong? 
10% of the church, 5%? Is there any strength anywhere? Is there anyone that stands up and says, I'm strong, I can, and I will. Will anybody pull themselves up by their spiritual bootstraps and saying, I'm going to start in the spirit realm? And it's going to catch. You'll have a battle on your hands. Devil doesn't like it, but that's his problem. Let there be war tonight. Let there be war today. Why it is called today, let it happen. But we're spiritually lazy and we go, oh, what should I do? It says, it's obvious what you can do. The thing that Jesus said to do. Fast and pray and you start producing fruit. And you know what he says? If you abide in me and my word abides in you and you're working, you're starting, do you know that you'll pray and things will happen? You'll pray for even your own needs and it'll come in. And Jesus says, you do my work, I'll do yours. You're faithful to me, I'll be faithful to you. How can you be to God like that? It's in his word. It's all through his word. You're in, you're in the best place you could be right now with Christ. You understand everything that I'm saying right now. You might be there today feeling a little bit weak, but I'll tell you, just a little bit of something will go so far. Just a little flicker because uh, it's so dark, just a, a little match will light up the room and you'll, for a moment you'll say, wow, you're maybe that little match. You can make a big difference. You can. Just say, God, however you want to use me. I fast today. I push this meal aside. I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start praying like I should. I'm going to start doing the things that I should. I'm just going to start a little at a time. I can't do everything, God, but I am going to start. And God says, I will hear you when you cry to me. God, take this thing away from me. This thing that just batters me. And God hears you. I've, I tell you, I've had, I've had times when I, I went to the Lord and I says, Lord, I've always done what you wanted me to do. And yes, I have failed, but Lord, take this thing away from me. And I'd be so oppressed by darkness because maybe I did deliverance on somebody. Maybe I, what, for whatever reason, or maybe the battle was just there. And I had to call somebody up and I would call them up and I'd say, please pray with me. It doesn't seem like my prayers are quite enough. And we would pray together. And I'd feel like a sheet come over me. And it would just move it away so easy. And I'd have a peace all over me. And I would thank God. And I would thank the person that I called was willing to pray with me. This is what God has called us to do. And this is what he says. He that keeps my commandments... And keepeth them, it is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. What does it mean by manifesting? I will show myself strong to you. I will come, I will hear your prayers. I will show you that I am God if you just do what I tell you to do. If you just do what I tell you to do. The thing about I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, that's good. And that's real. We need to go on from there. We have to go on. Because Jesus is going on. And if we don't go on from that point, we become backslidden and unacceptable to Jesus. We have to go on with Christ. We have to go on with him. Amen? Everybody agree with that? Let's have a plan. Let's move in the spirit. Let's, uh, let's be so anointed by God that wherever we go, we shatter the powers of darkness. That we have a word of God that we know it's not us speaking, but it's God speaking through us. That God consumes us and works through us. Amen? We're to be Christ-like. And we're to storm the gates of hell. Yes, the gates of hell will try to storm you. But let there be a fight. Amen? Yes. Let us give out liberty or else. Amen? Let us be an asset to God or else. And God wants us to be. 
You can be. Like today, I say again, you might be feeling a little weak, but you're not weak. You're strong. It's all a delusion that's upon you. You're strong in the spirit. You have the key to success. You really do. You have it. All you got to do is start moving in it. And you'll find out that that weakness will fade you. But you're strong. You can. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than an overcomer. You are able to set the captives free. You are able to preach goodness and encouragement to the poor. You can. And God is more than willing to hear you. But the devil has brought his deception in to make you feel weak. And it's all a delusion. And you've tied the hands of God from working in your life. Untie the hands of God by untying your heart and say, I refuse the devil. And in Jesus Christ, if he's not your Lord, if you don't love him with all your heart, you need to get on your knees right now. You need to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come and make me real with you. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I am so sorry for my sins. And if you'll do that, and if you'll do that with all your heart, he'll come into your life. He'll come into your life and will change you and make you brand new and give you confidence and strength where you never had it before. You'll have confidence and strength and you'll have victory in your life. But it all starts in the spirit realm. It all starts in the spirit realm. And that's where it starts with you here today in the spirit realm. Hold on to Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Stay tuned. Pastor Legner will be right back with the conclusion of today's message. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad you tuned in today. You know, we were talking about getting into the spirit realm first when we have things in our life that we get into the spirit realm first through fasting and praying. And this is what God's called us to do. Many times our fruit, our fruit is that we're a person that is able to fast. We're able to pray. And somebody else is able. We water, somebody else reaps. You know, this is where it's at. We sow, somebody else reaps. The Bible talks about you can't do it all. You can't do it all. But what you can do, what you can do is you can do your part. And it all starts in the spirit realm. So if you're a person that says, I, I can, I got sugar diabetes, and I can't fast, I really can't, I can't fast, I got to eat continuously a little bit, find somebody that can fast, but you can pray. They can fast, you can pray, and that situation that's in your life or in your church or the, the situation that you need God to move in, that's how it gets done that you pull in help from the right and to the left. You pull in people around you. That's why it's so good to go to church because it church, on a real church, a real church has people that will fast and that will pray for you, that will stand by your side no matter what, and that will petition God and ask God to send his angels to do whatever he has to do to come into your life to straighten that situation out. There are some things that only God can do and I say, unless you got God number one, you can't do anything and be successful at it. Amen? So this is what I'm saying today. Fast and pray. Get, do, walk in the Spirit, and you will cause things to happen in the natural. Amen? Do your part for the Lord. God bless you.